Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Kaylee, and if you have stumbled across this video in this section of our channel, it's where we cover all of our true crime related stories. So if you're not into true crime or you don't like to hear any sort of details about true crime, please find another video on our channel. This one will not be for you. Today's case is a little bit of a famous one. If you are Victorian, it was in the news headlines for a good while. Um, so you may have already heard of this story, but if you haven't, I'm going to give you all the details. So today's case is about Maria Corp. Maria Corp was born on the 14th of January 1955. She was born in Portugal and she was one of 12 children. She lived on her family's farm, which was self-sustained. Uh, That's how they lived, basically. The children would all help the parents' farm and they would live off the, the crops and the produce and things like that and trade amongst other families and other farms for the rest of the produce that they needed. At the age of 19, she met Manuel de Gauche and the pair got married. In 1976, they moved to Australia and they had their daughter, Laura. Sadly, in 1987, Manuel, he passed away. Now this leaves Maria to look after Laura as a single parent. Um, so she has to go out and get a job. She gets a job at the South Pacific Tire Factory and this is where she meets Joe Corp. Now, they started dating in 1990. Joseph Corp, though, he was born on the 4th of February, 1958 in Swan Hill. He was one of five children and he loved his sports. He was a big football fan, any sort of sporting activity he really got involved in. He did find it difficult to like hold down a job and he decided that he would enlist into the army. He was eventually kicked out of the army though because he went AWOL twice, so they got rid of him. He had also been previously married and he had two children to this previous marriage. So when Maria and Joe started dating, uh, early on in their relationship, Maria was actually the other woman. Joe was still married at that time. He did eventually get divorced and of course that led to Maria and Joe then also getting married. Then in 1993, they have a son of their own called Damien. Maria was very religious and she was a devoted mother. She cared for her children just especially well. Every single day she would go and pick Damien up from school without fail, rain, hail or shine. She would be there to pick up Damien from school and always had the, the kids' best interests at heart. On February 9th, 2005, she was meant to pick up Damien from school like she did every day. And Damien was waiting out the front of school, but Maria never showed up. Of course, he goes back into school after a period of time has passed and the teachers, uh, they start ringing Maria. To, maybe something's happened. Maybe she's had an accident and her phone just rings out and eventually just stops ringing altogether as if it has been turned off. The school then, of course, go forth and ring Joe and Joe comes and collects Damien from school. Now it gets to about 7.30 at night and Maria is still not home. Joe now goes to the uh, Craigieburn police to issue a missing persons report. He tells the police that there's been nothing out of the ordinary. There's been no reason why Maria would go and he has no idea where she is. She basically has fallen off the planet. He, he has no idea what's happened or where she could be. He also told police that he was at work all day and he did have witnesses that came forth and confirmed this. So the police, they start their investigation into where Maria could be. They obviously issue a missing persons report. They go through the process of the investigation. And during this, they discover that Maria had actually taken out a restraining order on Joe. But four days uh, prior to her disappearing, she had actually gone to the courts and had it altered. Originally, Joe was not able to enter the home or be within so many feet of Maria. But like I said, the four days earlier, she went and had it altered so that Joe could now return home and come into the house that they both lived in. The same day that the police really start their investigation, they are contacted by Joe's brother. He comes forth and claims that he thinks Joe has actually done something to Maria. He says that in the past he had helped with their computer uh, issues or programs or whatever and had read some emails that he had received from someone called Tanya. And earlier the morning of Maria's disappearance, Laura told the brother that she had heard screaming coming from her, what she assumed was her parents' bedroom. Now, Joe apparently brushed this off with Laura and said, no, no, you were dreaming. You didn't hear anything. 
but she had told her uncle that she had heard something. Now it's 10.40 p.m. at night and the police have asked Joe, can they go and look through his house? He has no problems. He's very upfront. He's, of course, come in, come in and search the house. The police ask him questions while they're searching it. Like, do you have any idea who could have ever harmed or would want to harm Maria or anything like that? And he says, yes, he actually knows someone. He then says that he believes Tanya Herman may have actually hurt Maria. Now, Tanya Herman was Joe's girlfriend. He was, in fact, cheating on Maria with Tanya. So let's jump back in time to October 11th, 2003. Joe and Tanya meet on a dating website and they chat away for a few months. On the 11th of February, 2004, they finally meet and the pair, they hit it off straight away. They enjoy each other's company. They go to sex clubs and they have swingers parties. They would even post ads looking for other couples or other singles to join them in the bedroom. And they would post these ads publicly in newspapers and things like that. So Maria, she was eventually, she was going to find out about this. Now, Maria, she found out that Joe was cheating on her. She found a photo of Tanya uh, just wearing his footy uh, gear, basically, and she knew what Tanya looked like. She knew that they were cheating together on Maria. And she, I don't know, she just kind of lost it a little bit. She dyed her hair to be the same colour as Tanya. She started... Um, going to sex clubs with Joe. I think she was really just trying to save her marriage by doing things that she wasn't really comfortable with. The pair, Maria and Joe, even put out their own ad looking for other couples and swingers to join them in their sexual activity. But I don't think Maria was really into it. Okay, so jumping forward again. So it's the 10th of February and Maria has gone missing. Joe is again interviewed by the police and when he leaves the interview like the process is done the police have undercover surveillance following him he goes home but on the way home he stops and put a plastic bag full of items into a bin jumps back in his car and continues to drive now the police that were surveillancing him they obviously saw this and grabbed the bag out in this bag there was a balaclava there was a vial of white powder there were some gloves there was paperwork Joe, he, he really didn't look good with this. And the police used this evidence to get a warrant. So now that they have the warrant, they return to his house and they have a good, proper search. During this search, though, they notice that Joe is being very iffy and sus. So they're, they're generally talking to Joe and Joe is already talking as if Maria has passed away. He's organising her funeral, basically sitting there. And at this point, nobody knows where Maria is, apparently. So why would he be doing that? He's then also caught um, trying to hide a green key card in a pair of shorts that he had. The police obviously see him doing this and they take the green key card into evidence. But other than the green key card, there really wasn't much at Joe's house that the police found during this search. But also on this day at around 6 p.m., Tanya Herman's house was also being searched. And while the police were there, they found um, a computer, they found a balaclava, and they found a, a shopping list, basically. And on this list, it had things like balaclava, socks, knife, shampoo and conditioner. They also found paperwork, which was her lease or her rental agreement. And on that, she'd actually signed it as Tanya Corp. After her house is searched, Tanya is taken into custody and formally interviewed. She confirms that she does in fact have a relationship with Joe and she tells the police that Maria had actually been blackmailing Joe with some photos that had him doing something illegal. And Joe had told Tanya that Maria said if he was to ever leave Maria, he would kill him, herself and their children. So because Joe was filling Tanya's head with all these things, she really hated Maria. She despised her in fact. But Tanya also admits to seeing Joe on the day that Maria disappeared. She said that she was with him at around about 11 a.m. A couple of days later, on the 13th of February, Maria's car is found right by the Shrine of Remembrance uh, in Melbourne. The car was found by a maintenance worker who was returning home. Uh, he noticed the car, and of course, this was all over the news of the car too, so people were looking out for it. Um, but he noticed that in the car in the front seat that bags had been rummaged and the car had been rummaged through, basically. 
but he walked around the back of the car and he said a horrendous smell came from the boot. He of course called the police straight away and they came out. They too look through the car and eventually open up the boot where they realised that the smell was actually Maria's decomposing body. Then all of a sudden the police realised that Maria, she's actually alive and still breathing. Now Maria was of course rushed to the hospital. She was dehydrated. She had a swelling of the brain. She was not well at all and the a hospital staff, they decided to put her into an induced coma. They were trying to ease her pain and suffering and basically assess the situation on how they were going to help Maria. Remembering she had been in that boot for three days. Of course, this has all happened and the police have reinstated the restraining order against Joe because he is a suspect. They basically said, no, no, you cannot go anywhere near that hospital. You cannot visit her or see her because you are a suspect. But the daughter, Laura, she was allowed to go into the hospital, of course. And when she went and seen her mum, she realised that her religious cross, her uh, earrings and her wedding ring were all missing. On the day that Maria was found, Tanya's brother, Steve, contacts the police. He explains to them how he thinks Joe is a horrible person. He does not like Joe at all. And he says that Joe has been basically controlling Tanya for their entire relationship. Tanya was infatuated with Joe and she would do anything at all he would say. He also tells police the day Maria went missing, he was in the CBD working and Tanya had arrived in her running and athletic gear and she was all sweaty and basically looked like she'd gone for a run. Now this wasn't really that odd because she was a fit person, she did do sporting activities and things like that, but when Steve realised the sort of the timeline of events of what was happening, he then realised it was a bit odd. She had actually ran to his work and asked him for a lift home which he did do. Another person who contacted the police was Tanya's daughter's friend. Now, she's a young girl who was at school and basically she was on the verge of a breakdown because she had this information and she just said she couldn't handle it anymore. She had to tell someone. Basically, Tanya's daughter had gone to school very upset and distraught and her friends had consoled her and she told her friends that her mum and Joe had killed uh, Maria and she just didn't know what to do she was very upset and of course very distraught about this and she really just she just needed to get it off her shoulders she just didn't want to have this information and so she told her friends who eventually came forth and told the police later on Tanya's daughter does deny telling her friends anything at all but the police aren't silly they realize she's a young girl she she's just trying to now protect her mum just a few days later, on the 16th of February, Steve actually goes and visits Tanya, but he's wearing a wire for the police. He asks Tanya what happened, can she explain anything, and even though she doesn't outright say Joe and her had hurt Maria, she does sort of dance around the fact that they had done something to Maria. And even though she doesn't come forth with, like, basically explaining it in point to point detail the police now have enough to arrest her the police then of course go and arrest tanya because of the information they have gathered and it's not long at all under a police interrogation that she cracks and admits to what has happened now straight off the bat tanya admits that she has in fact well attempted to kill maria but it was all joe's idea Joe had brainwashed her and basically tricked her into doing it and he had helped hide the evidence and basically planned the whole thing. She just had to go through with the deed. He had provided her with shoes that were his so that there was no uh, outside evidence or traces that Tanya had been there but the shoes were his. It, he, she also had a shower cap and things like that. So then we find out what actually happened to Maria and Tanya states that at 5.20 a.m. on the 9th of February, Joe goes and picks her up from her home and brings her back to his home. Something that I did forget to add that their home is not your typical average size home. It is a larger scale home and 
you could be at one end of the house and not hear everything that was happening at the other end of the house. Now, this is where Joe gave her his shoes, a shower cap, a balaclava, gloves, and a bag strap, which she was meant to use to strangle Maria to death. Anya then hid in the garage until 6.30 a.m. when Maria came out and went to get into her vehicle. When Tanya did attack Maria, Maria fought back and that was the shuffling and the screams that Laura did hear. It was in fact her mother fighting for her life. Unfortunately, Tanya obviously got the upper hand and at some point basically Maria fell and hit her head on the concrete of the floor of the garage and Tanya then proceeded to strangle her. Tanya thought that Maria had died and had put her body into the boot of her car. Tanya also admits to police that she did hear uh, Maria basically in the boot when she was driving to dump the car, but she just thought eventually Maria will die. Now, once she dumps the car into the CBD of Melbourne, she then gets out and runs to her brother's work where he then gives her a lift home. She then goes to Joe's work and explains to him that it's all been done. At this point, she tells Joe that she's that Maria has passed away, that she's done what she's done. And Joe basically says, well, I have an alibi. I've been here all day. Everything's fine for me. Joe then returns home that night and cleans the garage with bleach. And then Tanya goes and buries the other evidence that they had left. Joe was arrested not long after Tanya had admitted everything that had happened. And he was charged with all the offenses against Maria. And of course, there was that green key card he also had been stealing from the company that he worked for, so he was also charged with theft. That was what he was trying to hide uh, when the police had initially searched his house. This green key card was evidence against the stealing from his company. On the 28th of June 2005, uh, Tanya pleads guilty, and because of her testimony against Joe, she is given a lighter sentence. Her sentencing was 12 years with a minimum of nine years to be served. Joe, on the other hand, he pleads not guilty and he is released with bail. Unfortunately, poor Maria, she never recovered from her injuries. She was in a vegetated state and a hearing was held to um, basically see what was going to happen with Maria because at this point in time, Joe was still her next of kin, was next in line on her will and... They just didn't know what to do at this point. So throughout this next hearing, Joe is removed from her will, removed as her power of eternity and power of everything, basically. Um, and a separate party is brought in. Now, the separate party basically goes through what would Maria want? Like, he, he researches everything. What would she want in her life? Would you know, would she want to live on the, like, on a, in a vegetated state in hospital? What would she actually want? It was decided by this other party that basically no, Maria would not like to ever live out her life like this. And the decision was made to remove her feeding tube, um, which was basically euthanizing Maria. Unfortunately, because of this decision, uh, Maria did pass away. She passed away on August 5th and she died peacefully in her sleep. On August 12th, 2005, Maria's funeral was televised on the TV. People assumed Joe watched it at home on the TV and later that night, the police rushed to Joe's home. Police had found Joe, he had committed suicide. He'd actually hung himself from the shed in the backyard. It was said that uh, he had been found in front of a Collingwood memorabilia shrine and he also had photos of Maria there and a lot of empty alcohol cans. And then on the 14th of February, 2014, nine years and four days after the whole thing had happened, Tanya Herman was released from prison. For this case, this, it was horrible. I remember it so clearly on the news. It was a very, very publicized here in Victoria. I mean, it probably was all over Australia. Um, Poor Maria had been left in this car boot for three days. Like, I just cannot even begin to imagine what she must have gone through. The only comfort I personally have is the police did announce that she was unconscious, they believe, for the majority of this. I mean, 
oh, I just, I have no words. I just, yeah, they're her poor family. I just, yeah, my deepest sympathies and condolences to her family and friends. I could not imagine. I, I literally have no words for the disgust that I have for what happened to Maria. It's just so sad. But yes, that was today's case. If you have any recommendations on what case you would like us to cover in the future, please drop them in the comments below. So if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help our channel grow. And please remember to take care of yourselves and each other. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.